It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Dale Evans. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. You know, being a cowboy, you need lots of energy. That's why Grape Nuts Flakes is a cereal I like for strength and energy. Just two minutes after you eat a big bowl full, that whole wheat energy starts going to work for you. Try Grape Nuts Flakes Buckaroos. They're great. And now, we hope you like the story we've got for you tonight called Red Danger and Black Gold. There's a visitor at the Double R Bar Ranch tonight, Carol Ann Jensen, 12-year-old daughter of the Widow Jensen, whose horse ranch is in Paradise Valley. Carol Ann is not in a talkative mood, and after Roy, Dale, and Pat failed to draw from her the purpose of her visit, they've turned to the relaxation of some good Western songs. Don't forget, smiles are made out of the sunshine, and the smile goes along. Long way. Well, wonderful, wonderful. Roy and Dale, you blend just like gasoline in a carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> Are we to take that as a compliment, Pat? Anytime Pat compares anything to Nellie Bell's motor, you can be sure it's a compliment. <laughs> yes. How'd you like it, Carol Ann? Oh, it was fine. You know, honey, you ought to take that song to heart. I don't believe you smiled all evening. Yeah. What's eating you, Carol Ann? Nothing. I wish you'd sing me one more song before I settle Val and start home. Val? <laughs> That's an odd name for a horse, Carol Ann. Well, her real name is Paradise Valley. I just call her Val for short. Dale, is there a song about Paradise Valley? Well, not that I know of, honey. But there's a wonderful old song about another valley. Roy, sing Red River Valley for us, will you? Sure, I'll try it. <laughs> Carol Ann... Is there something you'd like to tell us? I... From this valley they say you are going We will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile For they say you are taking the sunshine That brightens our pathway a while Come and sit by my side if you love me. Do not hasten to be... Hey, wait a minute. Honey, what's the matter? Well, look, Carol Ann, you've got something important on your mind. Don't you think you'd better tell us what it is? Roy, Mother and I are leaving Paradise Valley. She's selling the ranch and we've got to give up all our horses and Val and everything. She says she just can't make a go of it. Well, honey, your mother raises some of the finest horses in the West. We thought all of your bad luck was over. Roy, 12 of our best mares have been stolen in the last month. What? Well, why didn't your mother tell me? She's just too proud to ask for help, and now she's decided to sell. Listen, Carol Ann, you and I are saddling Val and Trigger, and we're riding for your spread right away. Horse thieves aren't going to chase anyone as nice as you and your mom out of Paradise Valley. <laughs> I think you ought to wait, Mrs. Jensen, and give me a chance to look into this horse rustling business. This is breaking Carol Ann's heart. Oh, I know, Roy. I know how she loves the ranch and the horses. Especially that little filly of hers. Why, she wouldn't even come into the house with me until she sees that Val's bedded down for the night. Rogers, I've made Mrs. Jensen a good offer for the property. I don't think that a ranch like this is any place for two women all alone. What about this rustling, Mr. Stoll? 
Your spread's close to the Jansen property. Uh, don't you have any trouble? Oh, my hands have chased suspicious characters away now and then. I just can't afford extra hands, Roy. Fred's sickness was so expensive, and then there was the stable fire, and, well, Carol Ann and I have had to try it alone. What does the sheriff say about the missing mares? Well, the sheriff couldn't find anything. He thinks they're being lured away by a wild stallion. Well, there aren't many wild stallions left in these parts now. I wish you'd hold off selling for a few days and let me look into things. What do you think, Mr. Stowell? Well, it's perfectly all right with me, Mrs. Jensen, but of course I can't hold my offer open forever. I need the property, and I could just as well acquire it on the other side of me. Mother Roy, it's Val! She's gone! She's gone! What are you saying, Carol Ann? What happened, honey? She's gone, and I'll never see her again. Oh, Mother, sell the ranch, and let's get out of here. Now, wait a minute, Carol Ann. You started to put Val away for the night less than ten minutes ago. Who was out there? No one, Roy. Something made Val just run away into the night. Well, come on. Let's all go outside and see what we can find. Excellent idea. If there are rustlers operating, now's our chance to catch them. Now, Carol Ann, if, if you can tell Mr. Rogers and Mr. Stowell just what happened, maybe we can solve the whole thing. Wait. What's that? That's my horse, Trigger. See him? He's tied to the hitching rail. Oh, yes, yes. Carol Ann, we want you to show us exactly what you did when you put Val away. Well, I dismounted with you, Roy, and led Val back to this corral. Then I took the gear into the shed we're using for attack room. You haven't had a chance to rebuild your stables yet, have you? No, but in this weather, the mares are all right in the corrals. What happened next, Carol Ann? Then I came out to rub Val down, and I called her, and she didn't come. Then all of a sudden, the moon came from behind a cloud, and I saw Val jumping the fence and running up the slope toward the mesa as fast as she could go. What? She jumped that fence? Carol Ann, are you sure? Oh, of course I am. Well, the moon's going to be ducking in and out of those clouds all night. I don't know what kind of luck Trigger and I'll have, but we're going to do our very best to find some tracks. This is the way it's happened before, Roy. There's never a sign of anyone around. Hey, look. Way up on that cliff overlooking the mesa. Isn't that a horse? Oh, Roy, I see. It looks like a big red one. Hey. It's a wild stallion. Trigger knows. You mean that's what lured Val away? And the other mares. Oh, Roy, maybe there is a chance we can get them back. That's ridiculous. A wild stallion wouldn't come this close to civilization. Stranger things than that have happened, Mr. Stoll. Mrs. Jensen, if you'll hold off selling your ranch for another 24 hours, maybe you won't ever have to sell it. How about those grape nuts flakes? Take an old hand's advice, partners. Tomorrow, when you roll out of your bunk, corral a bowl full of that great energy given cereal, grape nuts flakes. Grape nuts flakes are called the great two minute energy cereal because two minutes after you polish off a bowl full, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellas and gals need. You'll go for grape nuts flakes sugar roasted flavor. It's delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package. The widow Jensen is on the verge of selling her ranch and giving up the horses her daughter Carol Ann loves when her finest brood mares disappear mysteriously one by one. Then Carol Ann's own pet filly, Val, is seen to leap the corral fence and head toward the mesa above. A wild stallion trumpets in the stillness of the western night, and Roy Rogers asks for 24 hours to track him down. Any sight of him, Pat? No, it looks like he gave us a slip, Roy. You're convinced that the stallion's been stealing mares from Mrs. Jensen's ranch and then keeping them up here somewhere on the mesa. Well, that's almost got to be the answer, Pat. In a case like this, Trigger's a better tracker than we are. I'm going to give him his head, Pat. Stick with us. Sure, Roy, but Nellie Bell may not like letting a horse do her thinking for her. Nellie Bell shouldn't feel bad about learning something from Trigger. He's taught all of us plenty. Hey, Roy, aren't we following a single set of tracks now? Yes, we are. The stallion's cut away from the mares. He doesn't want us to find him. Oh, Roy, Trigger's leading us on a wild goose chase. 
And this is supposed to be a wild horse chase. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop that thing, Pat, quick. You think this is a wild goose chase? What's that up on the table rock? Where? Well, I don't see nothing. Oh, oh, gosh, I do. Roy, that's the biggest reddest stallion I ever saw. <laughs> Good boy, Trigger. That's a quarry, and he's asking for a chase. Well, he's going to get it. Come on, boy. We are gaining on him, Roy. No, the stallion's like red lightning. Don't hold back for us, Pat. Give Nellie Bell the gas. We can't go any faster. Not over this rough ground. Where's that stallion leading us? Well, I don't know. Trigger would have a better chance if he wasn't weighted down with this saddle than me. Hold it, Pat. Whoa, 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 Trigger. What's the matter, Roy? I can't press Trigger like this. We're keeping the stallion in sight, but I'm going to let Trigger rest here and go on in the Jeep with you. All right. Nellie Bell never gets tired. Trigger, stay here, boy. We'll be back for you later. All right. Let's go, Roy. I still got my eye on that red devil. He ought to be tiring, too. Don't forget that Trigger was carrying 200 pounds and the stallion's running free. Hey, isn't he circling back toward the Jensen property? He seems to be. He's sure trying every trick to keep us away from his band of mares. But even then, a wild stallion would stay away from where people live, particularly in the daytime. But the big red fella isn't an ordinary wild stallion, Pat. His prints look almost like he's been shot at one time. Well, he sure is a speed demon. It's all Nellie Bell can do to keep him in sight. Well, we have to keep him in sight, so step on it, Pat. There he is, Pat. Slow up. In fact, stop. Stop? What for? Because the stallion stopped him. Right at the water hole on the edge of Mrs. Jansen's property. Well, after the distance he's been running this morning, he'll need a drink. Okay, there he goes, Pat. See? He didn't drink at all, did he? No, he didn't. He seemed to sort of shy away from the water. Let's take a look at that water hole. Hey, he's cutting back up to the mesa again. We'll just take a fast look at the water hole, and then we'll go after him again. Keep your eye on the horse if you can, Pat. Sure, Roy, sure. He's still climbing up the incline. Hey, now I know why he didn't drink here, Pat. No animal would. Well, what's the matter? It's a perfectly good water hole, ain't it? No, it isn't. It's covered over with a film of oil. What? It's oil, all right, Pat. An underground oil deposit has seeped through into the feeder spring. Well, we'll have to forget the stallion for a little while until we talk to Mrs. Jensen. <laughs> But, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Stowell made me a new offer this morning, and, well, I told him I'd take it if Carol Ann agreed. Where's Stowell now? He's gone up on the Mesa to look for Carol Ann and Dale. Carol Ann and Dale? Are they up there? She figured you and Pat would concentrate on finding the wild stallion, so she called Dale and asked her to help look for Val. Well, I don't blame Carol Ann, and as long as Dale's with her, I, I guess it's all right. Uh, Mrs. Jansen, do you have any idea what your property's worth? Well, with the stables burned down and half the stock gone, it can't be worth much. But Mr. Stowell offered me practically what they're getting for ranches around here. Hmm. That was generous of him. <laughs> Mrs. Jensen, just one more question. Was anyone in this house this morning besides Esty Stowell? No. Why? Because you're one of the neatest housekeepers I've ever known, Mrs. Jensen. And yet there's a big black stain on your hall carpet. Let's go, Pat. A stain on the hall carpet? What are you talking about, Roy? We'll tell you later. Just don't sign away your ranch, no matter how much anyone offers you for it. Because that stain on your carpet came from Stoll's boots. And it's an oil stain. Gosh, Dale, I've never been over here at the far edge of the Mesa before. It's wild, isn't it? Well, it's rocky. These box canyons would be a perfect hiding place for a band of mares. There are quite a few hoof prints here where the rocks aren't absolutely bare. Yes. And look, Carol, don't they seem to funnel toward that widest canyon to our left? Yes, they do. That looks like a big one. Let's ride over there, Dale. All right. Come on, Buttermilk. Help, Nicky. Dale, I think I saw a horse go between those rocks. Why, sure. Well, maybe we found the right place already. Whoa, Nicky. Dale, what was that? Only one animal in the world makes a sound like that. A stallion when he's protecting his band of mares. Turn your horse and run for it, Carol. Go, Buttermilk. Go, Nicky. Dale, it's a huge red horse. He's after us. Dig, Carol. Dig. If he catches us, if he catches us, we're dead. Oh, he's gaining. Dale, look. Look what's coming. It's Trigger. Trigger. And if he can just cut that horse off, Trigger. Stop your horse, Carol. Look. Trigger cut in front of him and knocked him aside. Oh, will Trigger be all right? You bet he will. Oh, did you ever see anything? 
something like it. Trigger's just standing there guarding us. He's just daring that big red fellow to come any closer. Well, Trigger won't actually fight unless Roy gives him the word. But I don't think we have to worry. Hey, what's going on here? Where did that Palomino brute come from? Palomino brute? Listen, mister, that's Roy Rogers' horse, Trigger, and he just saved our lives. Oh, Mr. Stowe, we found the place where our stolen mares are hidden, and that big red stallion attacked us, and Trigger headed him off. Well, call him off. My red horse is worth six of that Palomino. What? Your red horse. Yes, my red horse. You... you trained that big brute to steal our mares. Mr. Stowe, when Roy Rogers finds out about this... He isn't you're... going to find out about it. You came out unarmed this morning, didn't you, Miss Evans? <laughs> Well, I didn't. Now get off your horses, both of you. Because I'll use this rifle on whomever I think it necessary. You planned this whole thing so you could steal Miss Jensen's property from her. Not steal. Buy. Mother will never sell to you now. Oh, yes, she will. Because she'll never see you again. You what? wouldn't dare. First, we'll get rid of that Palomino. Trigger, go! Run, boy! Get away! That won't do any good because the way I handle this rifle... No! Hey! Don't you dare shoot that horse. Carol, get away from him. Knock my rifle aside, will you? You little spitfire. I made you miss, and Trigger's safe now. Don't you lay a hand on her. Stall out. You'll do nothing. Put your hands in the air. You too, Carol Ann. You came nosing around up here for your horses. Well, I think I'll show them to you. Then they are in that box canyon. That's right. And if the entrance was sealed, you could be with them until you all starve to death. Because there's no other way out. You aren't talking much sense, because there's no way to seal the entrance either. You're mistaken, Miss Evans. I happen to have some dynamite with me. Dynamite? Yes. I made a very interesting discovery. You see, I set off a charge of dynamite in a certain water hole on the Jensen property, and I discovered oil. Oil? Why, Now into that canyon. I'll tie you both, and then I'll plant a stick of dynamite in the loose rocks above you. I think Mrs. Jensen will be glad to sell when she finds that her daughter has disappeared. Time for another Roy Rogers reminder. Know how to win. Yep, buckaroos, that's Roy's reminder for today. You know what a great feeling it is when you win a prize in school or win the big game? You get lots of praise. But partners, don't let that praise go to your head so much you crow over the losers. On the other hand, when you're on top, you've got to try and stay there. You have to keep right on practicing to keep on winning. And talking about winning the top honors next time, one of the best ways to do it is to stay healthy. Eat plenty of nourishing food like Post's Grape Nuts Flakes, the cereal Roy likes best for building up strength and energy. Yes, kids, Roy eats Grape Nuts Flakes for energy. His picture's on every package. Yes, Roy likes those swell tasting Grape Nuts Flakes because their whole wheat energy starts going to work for you just two minutes after you eat a big, multi-rich bowlful. That's energy you need for most everything you do during the day. And you'll like the flavor of sugar-roasted Grape Nuts Flakes. So if you want to be king of the cowboys in your corral, ask your mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. How about them? How about them? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? They are so good, good for you, too. The two-minute energy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Revealing himself as the owner of the supposedly wild stallion who was raiding the Jensen herd, Esty Stoll captures Dale and Carol Ann Jensen, ties them in a box canyon, and sets the dynamite charge which will seal off the only exit. Meanwhile, Roy and Pat hurry toward the place where Trigger is supposed to await them. This is about where we left Trigger, ain't it, Roy? This is it. Hmm. I don't think he'd just wander off. Well, now, with Nellie Bell, you can just take the key out. And she'll stay put until hey, you're Here ready. comes Trigger, Pat. He's coming from the far side of the mesa. Is he ever? Look at that horse, Travis. Trigger, here, fella. Hey, what's the matter? Why, he's wheeling around, Roy. Looks like he wants to go back wherever he came from. He sure does, and he wants us to follow him. All right, Trigger, lead the way, boy. We'll be right with you. We can move our hands a little. Now, you reach in my pocket and try to get my compact, honey. Your compact? 
Oh, Dale, that fuse will burn down to the dynamite any minute. Now, what good will it come? Never mind. Just get it. Roy left Trigger up here, and he'll be coming back for him. The mirror in my compact's our one chance to signal him. Where in the heck is that horse taking us, Roy? Well, he's heading towards the row of box canyons, Pat. Well, if he don't stop soon, he'll run a smack into him. Look, Pat. There's a bright spot sort of dancing on the rocks at the opening of the big canyon. Yeah, I see it. Hey, Trigger's stopping. That's a reflection from a mirror. Roy, right in the middle of that beam. Isn't that a kind of a little sputter and flame? Pat, just one thing burns like that. A fuse. There's a charge of dynamite in those rocks up there. And the fuse hasn't long to burn either. Well, I can still cut it, I think. Hey! You shot that dangling fuse right off. The spark stopped. Good. There's someone in that canyon. Hey, now what's the matter, Trigger? Roy, that rider. He wheeled out behind that rock and he's getting out of here fast. That's the horse we've been chasing. And the man on him is stolen. Pat, check that canyon. Trigger and I are going after that red horse and this time we're going to catch him. Got a boy, Trigger. We're gaining. That red devil's good, but he can't beat you with weight on him. Hey, Stoll, pull up. No, Roger. No. Go, Red Danger. Your horse can't make it, Stoll. Now, are you going to pull up? No. All right. I'll have to pull you off. No. Now, Stoll, get up on your feet and talk. What do you mean, Roger? You had that red horse trained to raid Mrs. Jensen's stock, didn't you? No, I just... uh... You know there's oil on her property. That's why you wanted to buy it. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't? Well, your boots do. Those are oil stains, Stoll. You got careless. Let me go, Rogers. I didn't hurt anyone. You've been playing with dynamite, too. I don't know what your game is, but I've got an idea. Rogers, you're talking loco. I don't know anything about any dynamite. Hey, Roy. Roy. Dale and Carol Ann were tied up in that box canyon. Oh, Roy, you got there just in the nick of time. And that's the man who put us there. I thought so. Stoll, I can't stand a liar, and I can't stand a cheat, and I can't stand anyone who picks innocent women for his victims. You aren't going to be man enough to take this. No, Rogers, Here don't. some dynamite you've got coming. Oh. There. When he comes to, he'll be visiting the sheriff. Roy, how can there be men like that? If it hadn't been for Trigger and then for you and Pat, well, we wouldn't have had a chance against him. He had that big red horse trained. All our missing horses are in that box canyon. Even my little Val. Oh, I'm so glad to have her back. Boy, you've got a lot to be glad for, Carol Ann. You and your mother can stay here now, and you sure won't have to worry about money. You certainly won't. You're going to have yourselves a couple of oil wells. And if you'd like that red stallion of Stoll's, I think that could be arranged, too. His name's Red Danger. Gee, he's a wonderful horse. But if he was mine, do you think I could change his name? I don't see why not. You got any ideas? Sure. You see, my filly is Paradise Valley. And if you hadn't sung that song last night, I never could have told you what was the matter, and Mother and I would have sold the ranch. So, I'm going to name my new horse Red River Valley. That's wonderful, honey. Oh. You know, I I wish I had my guitar here. I I really feel like singing now. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, Goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Mm -hmm. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal Roy likes best for strength and energy. Look for the picture of Roy and Trigger on the front of the package. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Coated Rice Cereal announces the second week's Name the Contest winner. Don Kohler of Fremont, Nebraska wins a real Palomino pony picked by Roy Rogers. And buckaroos, still one more pony to win. Final week's contest closes Sunday midnight. Get entry blanks at your grocers. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Isabel Jewell, Ann Whitfield, and Jess Kirkpatrick. 
This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Grape Nuts Flakes. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.